Okay, welcome to another cast. Uh, this is going to be Exion Thaniri against Complexity Academy Uncture. Not quite sure how to pronounce that. Um, again, this is a ladder game. It's not a uh, not a clan war, not a tournament match, not a play -hem. Nothing like that. Just a good old ladder match. So in the red, in top right, have Thaniri playing Terran. This is the only race he plays. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you know that. I'm sure he can off race, but he is a Terran player, is what I'm getting at. And in the bottom left, part of the Complexity Academy, it is Uncture. And this is quite quite a nice um, PVT on Daybreak. Um, yeah, not much more to say. Um, if I had to pick a, a race that has the better end of this matchup for Daybreak, ah, that's hard to say. I'm, I might say Terran, simply because of how far away the third base is from the main. A uh, bit of banter going on in the chat. Uh, just a, a stim Bioforce here, as well as two Medivacs back here at a certain time in the game is very, very, very hard to hold, or even simply one medevac, and that is purely because of the walking distance between the third base and the main base. Like on Cloud Kingdom, which is um, a very, very strong Protoss map, your third is like below the cliff of your first, so you can blink up from your third into your main. But on Daybreak, you have to walk all the way up here and all the way back to defend from Terran Harass. So it becomes much, much harder. And because of that, Colossus Tech is not as popular on this map, simply because they are slow and they can only be in one place at once, where if you go for the more gateway style with upgrades and storm, you can warp in those gateway units, you know, eight strong at wherever location you need them. Versus, you know, you might be on three or four gates if you're doing Colossus at the, uh, you know, about the 10 minute mark when uh, Medivac push comes in. Anyway, so Thaniri, not getting the second depot, he's not really too concerned with hiding what he's doing, he's just going straight away for that command center. He's got the marine out to deny scouting now, but um, should have Uncher gone for a, a 9 scout right after his pylon, he would be able to see this. So there's no real deception in this build, he's not trying to hide what he's doing or anything like that. He's dropping out in that mule there. And on the Protoss side of things, He's going to be one gate expanding, it looks like. Although, not a very greedy variation of the build. More the safe variation. He can chrono out a stalker if he sees marines coming. You know, he can make a zealot if he's getting engineering bay blocked. Although, if you have to make one, it's kind of too late. You're going to get blocked. But, you know, still, it can be re he can be reactive with this, is the point I'm getting at. He can, um, he's not going nexus first. You know, he's not going for some 4-gate or something on one base. He's just going with the good old 1-gate expand. Adding on that second gas right away. And then we'll be looking to see gates 2 and 3. Over on the other side, the Neri, adding on those extra barracks. So he's uh, just going into 3-gate. Got a gas coming here, probably see a second one. And, you know, we'll most likely be going into medevacs. So, as for this map, um, this is the standard ladder version, so you do have two, ga two gases at this base here, as well as um, full minerals, full mineral patch, I think that's eight. Whereas um, on a lot of versions, you might see only five or four mineral patches here and one gas. And that is mostly to do with the Zerg matchups, it's not really for PvT, but that does give a very decided edge to whoever is able to secure this base first. Other than that, um, you know, it's just a standard good old daybreak. Uh, some features of this map, a lot of good attack paths up and around. You don't have to use the center of the map. So those big, slow, slow moving armies are not quite so strong on this map. Again, this is mostly relating to the Zerg matchups when you're thinking of like Broodlord and Fester Corruptor and things like that, but just some things to think about. We have line of sight blockers, these parts of the map, you can hide pylons in and around these guys. It's good stuff. 
Now Thaneri's doing something interesting. He's delaying his additional add-ons. He is getting that stim, but he's making this is something he really likes to do. Is get that little handful of marines and then go and do a poke, do a pressure, see what the Protoss is up to, force his hand a bit, make sure he's not being too greedy. And I think that's a really, really um, good way to play the matchup. Although with um, Unkjer going three gate before Robo, as he did, although I didn't actually show you that, sorry about that, but um, he did go three gate before Robo. That is kind of really a good counter to these early marine moveouts. Because you're going to have enough units out to stop it. Going for a supply depot wall and it's natural, building that up. And going for uh, just this uh, medevac push. See the factory, see a reactor here. Only on one engineering bay, he's not going double. Um, double engineering bay has fallen a bit out of style in this matchup. Usually what people will do now is they'll get the plus one attack, and then the plus one armor, and as that's about halfway done to finishing, they'll drop the armory, and the second eBay, and then they'll get 2-2 two -two right away. Here he is uh, going for these medevacs, lifting up a barracks back here to make another add-on, because you can't make add-ons in this part. That's one of the uh, little um, spawn advantages on this map, is if the Terran spawns down here, he can make an add-on right on his barracks, he doesn't have to move it or lift it, but if he spawns up here, you want that out on, you're going to have to lift it. So Observer comes in, he sees what the Neary's up to, he sees the extra gate, extra barracks being added on, going up to five racks, which is, you know, very, very standard, and in response he's got his own gateways coming. So he'll be on six gate, and he's getting out of Colossus. So again, what I was talking about earlier is, it's kind of hard to hold off a really well-played, uh, medevac push or pressure if you have purely Colossus because you just have to spread out so thin to be able to block this location and your main and possibly even your natural as well so we'll have to see if that comes into play um, Marine stimming in here you're gonna do some scouting you're gonna see if the third base goes down or not but we'll get killed by those sentries not gonna do his job and that factory, as much as Daenery would like it, is not going to get to block this nexus. So it looks like he, he did not go, by the way, for that marine poke, as I was talking about. Which is probably a good thing, because I don't think it would have worked against this many sentries and then war pins, but... That, that is something Daenery really likes to do, so I just I thought he might be doing that. So he's coming in here with this force, just your very standard 10 minute, 2 medevac push. He's got plus 1 attack on his units, but the Colossus are out for Unger. However, he's gonna have to, um, he's gonna have to get up here pretty quickly if he doesn't want his third to get cancelled. And it looks like Daenerys gonna take this opportunity by the horns, stimming in, focusing down the Nexus, and it will have to be cancelled. So that's a very nice little win for Daenerys here. Well, you need to be careful with this factory now, because you're back uh, you need that to make an armor, because no armory means no 2-2. Uh, looks like he's going to lose his factory, that's not too good. Hopefully he throws down that armory in time. No, second starport, but no armory. That's a little bit of a loss there for Thaneri. Could have uh, lifted that up a bit quicker once he had killed the Nexus, but not the biggest of deals. Especially with um, Uncture only on one forge as he is. He's not going to get bowled over by a 2-2 or a 3-3 timing. Zooming in again, seeing if they can get another cancel on that Nexus, but seeing the two Colossus in position this time and backs out immediately. Nothing wrong with that choice there. Wouldn't have gone too well for him if he tried to stim in on that. Kill them. Up to five barracks now. Second starport out. I like this um, allows him to get a few more Vikings out to combat those Colossus. Uh, not going double reactor, just one, but you know, three Vikings at a time. That's a very healthy amount. And it will actually make quite the big difference. Because if they continue to produce Colossus, you can sort of uh, reactively make more Vikings. Whereas if you had only one starport, you might not be able to. Big engagement coming down here. But the Neri stims, and it looks like he's he's got quite the big arc. I'm not sure if he'll be able to clean this up. It looks like as those force fields disappear and his units come in, he will be able to focus down these Colossus. One goes down, will the second one he needs to throw down some more force fields to block these units back, but doesn't do it in time. Loses his second Colossus. 
And that's a very nice win for Teneri, because now any scary Colossus timing that might be coming can no longer come with those first two Colossus down. So it's a very, uh, very big, big win for the Terran. He can now switch into Ghosts, he can add more Barracks, he can maybe add a fourth Command Center, and hold all the time, not be uh, afraid of being counterattacked. And of course, he can continue to do this pressure of which he's doing. Up in about 15 supply, but that's almost to be expected at this point in the game. Just because with those mules, Terran's going to have a bit more minerals to make those units. Um, but in the end, Protoss units are stronger in the straight up fight, so that's the trade off. Anyway, stimming in again, not committing too much, just kind of doing some damage, forcing a reaction, keeping Uncture on his toes, in essence. Third base is. Not fully saturated, but it's getting there. He's doing this, I like this, he's not doing a big, you know, big Congo line transferring. He's rallying his main and his natural down there, and letting it saturate naturally. That's something I don't think enough players do. In the meantime, however, he's stimming in again, doing more pressure, and it looks like he was able to pick off one of those Colossus. But he doesn't quite have the brute force to um, beat this army. Especially as he's so Marauder heavy, Marauders are great against Colossus, not so great against the Zealot Archon. And that's essentially what Uncture is switching into here. He's going Zealot Archon, he's abandoning the Colossus attack, he's getting his Storm out. And the thing to beat that is Ghosts and Heavy Marines. You hit the EMPs and then you stim in with your bio and you clean everything up. But the Marine DPS is higher than the Marauder DPS, despite the Marauder costing more. A marine's damage per second is what you need against zealots. However, they are also very squishy, which is why you need the ghosts, because if a big uh, Psy Storm hits those marines, they will melt much, much quicker than marauders. So marauders are by far the more forgiving unit. They'll allow you to mess up a bit more, but if you're playing perfectly, you want more marines in your composition, which is something I think Puma was showcasing quite a while ago now at the NASL finals. He would be going very, very, very marine heavy against MC, and then in these fights he'd do way more damage than you thought was possible, because he had so many marines. Looks like Thaneri still being uh, being a threat, being a presence with these units, although now, however, with all these zealot warpins, Uncture has taken the supply lead. So, Thaneri has to be careful in this next engagement, because if he doesn't micro perfectly, this army can disappear really fast. Well, he's gonna need to be careful. Fourth base now coming in and landing, and it is going to be that um, more powerful fourth base. So this will have a big effect on the game, might do to swing the tides in its favor. Vikings a little out of position, but he notices that. And there's no big stalker force to blink under them and clean them up, so it's not the worst of deals. And it looks like Uncture is now pressing the fight. He's pressing the issue. He wants to go. He's throwing up Guardian Shield, he's pushing forward, but then he turns back when he sees that Thaneri is stiff. And that's a good move by Thaneri, because without these ghosts, he will get eaten by storms. I mean, this is 8 High Templar, that is really a lot of storm. They know, they, mind you, some of these are freshly warped in, so they don't have 75 energy, but it's not exactly a fight you want to go picking. Oh, hey, I don't have ghosts, you have High Templars, let's fight. I mean, that just never happens. However, these Vikings, although there's no more Colossus, so there is one to shoot down, they still serve a secondary purpose, and that is in sniping observers. This is a very, very, very frustrating thing to deal with as a Protoss player, is when you have everything in place, you can counter the, their army, and then you lose your observer, and ghosts cloak up, and you can't, there's no way to reveal them. Very hard to play against. EMP is going down, hitting all the Templar. Very nice EMP is by Thaneri, and he's going to be looking to go with this. He's stimming in, he's going for it, Zillots are charging forward. Where's the micro back? There it is. Stutter stepping back. Now, as the Zealots don't have a very big concave around his force, he's okay to just sit here. But it's when they start wrapping all the way around you that you want to start stutter stepping back. More force fields going down, but it looks like Daenerys is going to just brute force his way through this fight. 2-2 two, two upgrades coming. Already done, rather. And Stimming forward, picks off that Archon, and he's going to be able to clean up all the rest of these gateway units if they stay here. Even another EMP, throwing down EMPs on the warping in units, very nice. And yeah, he's going to clean up everything. This is looking so bad for Uncture. He's going to be able to focus down this fourth base, 
probably be able to kill this fifth 